Hi guys, so I'm working on a large terrain piece and for this large terrain piece I need some trees. Uh, you may have seen in the recent video I had to go out making a tree out of sprue which came out really well uh, but obviously quite time consuming. So as you can see I've 3D printed a tree um, and this is my little figure that I'll be using so that's all the scale that I'm working to. So I don't want them too big, I also don't want them too small. So yeah I've 3D printed this, this out and it took about 3 hours. Obviously it's come out really well, it's um, Gloomhaven or a Gloomhaven tree, and it's on Thingiverse, so it's nice and free, which is awesome. So go check that out. But obviously, I need around about 15 of these. So I thought rather than 3D print them all, I would make a mold of this one and then basically cast loads of them in the plastic resin. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So just to make it easier, and obviously to get this piece ready for me to make a mold, um, I don't really need all these branches that go inside the uh, the canopy. So I'm just going to measure them off and well, cut them off basically. So yeah, so, I want to make a mould of this and I don't need all these bits. Plus when you do have lots of, uh, well, kind of nibbly knobbly bits, it kind of makes the process of making the mould so much harder. And I like to make things simple for myself, so I'm just cutting loads of these bits off. So say, these won't be seen because they're inside the canopy. Um, and basically when I do make the canopy, the canopy is going to be a solid piece. So rather than obviously having this big hole in it like this piece, it's going to be one solid piece. So having the, uh, the branches cut nice and flat means that the piece will just sit nicely on top. So initially I'm going to make a simple one piece mould of both of these parts, obviously doing them separately. And basically I'm going to use these cups as kind of like the surround to uh, to keep obviously the liquid silicone in. Um, there's a variety of ways you could obviously do this kind of thing. In the past I've, uh, I've made things with Lego and obviously like built a Lego wall all the way around the pieces that I want to cast. Uh, but in this case I'm just going to use these plastic cups. Again, it's making things nice and simple for yourself. Um, and yeah, because these are sort of about the right size for these, these items, um, yeah, works out really well. So I'm using a greaseproof tray, uh, just because obviously this will help release everything afterwards. And rather than using like a super glue, because obviously that won't release too well from the uh, silicone tray, I'm going to use some hot glue gun just to go around the edge. Again, this should seal it all together. So when I pour the silicone resin in, uh, it shouldn't leak out. Although you will see later on that, um, well, it does leak out a little bit. Not a lot, but a little. So this is the um, silicone, oh, I keep calling it resin. Obviously it's not resin, it's rubber. Um, yeah, this is the silicone rubber that I'm using. Again, I've used a variety of different types from different companies. Um, and yeah, I found them all to work really well. So this one's mixed on a ratio of 10 to 1. Uh, the reason I do like this one though in particular is because the hardener that comes with it is a different colour. And the reason for that, uh, or the reason I like it, is because when you mix the two together, you need to mix them in fully. So having them different colours means when you do mix them, you can tell obviously when it is fully mixed. It is quite important to use scales for this as you really do need the measurements to be accurate. Um, you could be a little bit out, but not by too much. Uh, because obviously if you are a lot out, then basically it won't harden or it'll harden too quick and not in a good way. And then it's just a case of stirring it in really thoroughly. So this is why I like the fact that this is two different colors because you can keep mixing, keep mixing. And then obviously you need a nice consistent light pink throughout the whole of it. And that's what I've got here. So pouring from a great height, obviously this kind of helps reduce any air bubbles. As I don't own a vacuum chamber. Um, if I did, then obviously you'd use the vacuum chain chamber afterwards just to sort of remove any air that might be trapped within it. And then just keep pouring until the item is fully covered. I like to have at least five millimeters around the sort of the piece that I'm molding. Um, that way I know it is in there nice and secure and the mold should last quite a long time. And then in a small effort to try and reduce any air trapped in there, basically I just give the whole thing a good old vibrating. Um, yeah, so the table goes a bit nuts, but it does help a little bit. Then we leave it for eight hours, as that's how long it takes this silicone rubber to fully cure. And then once it has, we can demold it. Um, so yeah, so this is where it leaked out a little bit. So it wasn't too bad, obviously it hasn't leaked out enough um, that there's no sort of silicone rubber in the actual mould. So yeah, that's not too bad. Um, obviously I did have a go at gluing some of this uh, the glue down with normal glue afterwards when I did see a bit spill out. Um, so yes, yeah, so this might be a little bit tough for me to get off um, just because a few little bits of this are super glued down. But um, hey ho, so <laughs> the right tools for the right job and all that. So it's probably easier actually just cutting off the, uh, the plastic cup and then say, just in case you're trying to wedge um, these moulds off the, uh, the grease proof tray. So it took a bit of brute force, but um, yeah, eventually they pop off 
And yeah, I'm kind of pleased with how it's come out. It's um, got plenty of the, uh, the definition in there and the shape and all that. Uh, obviously, the other piece, uh, I did actually glue that onto the, uh, the board. And yeah, that took uh, a lot longer to get off. But again, eventually it did come off. So the mould that had the tree in, I knew wouldn't come out in one piece. So my kind of plan for this was make, to make it into a split mould. Um, and basically, obviously, a split mould is kind of what it says. You put splits down the side, generally do a zigzaggy sort of shape, just so then it sort of like closes back nicely. Um, yeah, do a little split down the side, zigzaggy, and then you should be able to like part open it um, to pull out the, the piece. So it's kind of a cross between a one part mould and a two part mould. Because obviously it is in one part, but let's say obviously it splits open so you can pull the tree out. Um, but as you can see, I was having a bit of bother here because I thought the branches on it were quite sort of straight, but they weren't. They were quite sort of bent and sort of curved. So caused a little bit of an issue, which you'll find out in a minute. So yeah, then it's just a case of obviously filling them up with the resin. Um, again, this is nice and easy to do, and the one I'm using, um, same company as before, and this one is on a ratio of one to one. Um, I hadn't actually used these for quite some time, which is why the lid sort of took a little while to get off. Um, but again, using scales for this, just to get it uh, accurate. Um, but yeah, one to one scale isn't too bad. Um, but obviously these ones aren't sort of different colours. So it is difficult when you mix them to really know when you're thoroughly done. So I always think as a rule of thumb, keep mixing, keep mixing, keep mixing. And then when you think you are done, keep mixing for another couple of minutes, just to make sure. Uh, but then once that is done, you can then just pour it in. And again, I'm pouring it in from a great height to hopefully not get too many air bubbles trapped in there. Um, which to be honest, I didn't with this one. They come out pretty cool. So I don't know if anyone's noticed my deliberate mistake yet, but obviously I didn't leave any air holes. Um, so basically where all these little tree trunks go into the bottom, when I pour resin in, they're basically just going to fill up with air um, and yeah, it won't get full up. So, yeah, deliberate mistake I made there, just to obviously show you what can happen. Um, so now, obviously, it's a case of I need to make some air holes. Uh, but obviously, as you'll see, obviously another deliberate mistake, I make an air holes that go downwards. So this means when I pour resin in from the top, it will pour down and then just pour out the bottom. Which kind of isn't very good, because obviously if it pours out the bottom, it means it's just going to keep on pouring out. So ideally, when you do these kind of moulds, you want to make the air valves or air traps or air escape, whatever you want to call them, um, you make them go upwards. So when you pour the resin in, it fills up, the air gets pushed up to the top, and then the resin comes up the top, and basically it lets you know that it's full then. Uh, but yeah, sometimes I get a bit impatient when I'm making moulds and doing things, um, and like this one, I kind of rushed it. But as you can see, the canopy has come out really well. Obviously no real surprise because obviously it's a nice simple one part mould, no sort of intricate bits going off at different angles, so yeah, it's going to come out nice. So obviously with the bottom of the, um, the tree trunk one, obviously I put some tape at the bottom because the uh, resin was pouring out the bottom. Uh, but as you see, it doesn't come out too bad, um, but obviously it does need more air um, sort of escape places, so some of the branches haven't come out in full. Which, to be honest, isn't too bad, because at least this way, all these trees are going to look slightly different. Because some of them are going to have full branches, some part branches, and some, well, a mix and cross between the two. But the main thing is, obviously, it's come out really well, as in the definition in the bark has come out well. Um, so yeah, it's not too bad. So what I eventually do is I make some more little air trap, air reservoirs, whatever you want to call them. Um, and basically I kind of part pour the resin into this mould when it's open and that way I get more more of the tree trunk branches coming out but I say overall I'm not too uh, too worried about that because it does make these trees that little bit individual from each other but the main bit is the main part of the tree is there the definition is all there um, and yeah this is a very quick way of making these because literally the resin that I'm using it hardens in about five minutes so as opposed to printing one of these out, which takes three hours, I can literally make one of these in about five, 10 minutes. And that includes mixing up the resin, pouring the resin, waiting for it, and then demolding, which is pretty cool. So now you'll be able to see what I mean by I part pour the resin in. So basically I kind of like widen everything up, pour the resin in, um, obviously do that to both halves. And then obviously before it all sets, I put both halves together um, obviously, say this is a very messy way of doing it, and I wouldn't really advise doing it. Put the tape at the bottom, 
uh, keep it closed and then pour the resin in the top. So yeah, it kind of works, but it's very messy, sloppy, um, and yeah, there's better ways of doing it. So I kind of did this for quite a few of the tree trunks, and then I thought, well, I might as well print off loads of tree trunks, just because obviously I can print off quite a few on one plate. Um, I think I actually printed off eight in one go, um, and that took just under, well, about two and a half hours to print off eight. But then I obviously, with the tops, I made all the tops in this way, because it works out a lot quicker. And there we go, so there's the original one that I printed off, and here's one that I casted. So yeah, no real difference, obviously the underneath is completely flat, um, but the detail, definition, yeah, very happy with. But as I say, because these are very flat underneath the uh, the canopies, I kind of wasn't really sort of too happy with that. Um, obviously that's how they were printed from uh, the Gloomhaven uh, Thingiverse print. So what I wanted to do then was obviously to make the underneaths a little bit less flatter. So taking some good old polyfiller, I'm using this one which is a nice fast setting one. Uh, literally five minutes sort of setting, which is pretty cool. Um, and then yeah, I'm just going to sort of like add some bits to the bottom. Again, it doesn't have to be too neat precise here, because obviously it's the bottom or the underneath of sort of the tree bushes and all that. Um, and yeah, basically it's just there to get rid of that flat edge. And the end result I think looks pretty cool. So while I continue to add all the grout, or for those Americans out there, the spackle, so I want to say a big shout out and thank you to all my patrons for obviously helping support the channel and making sure that I can continue to buy bits and pieces to carry on making videos for you guys. So yeah, thank you so much. Uh, if you want to become a patron, there's a link in the description and there'll be a link at the end of the video showing how you can do it for as little as £2 a month. And you get to see access to all the behind the scenes pictures and work in progress stuff of what I'm currently working on basically. Also I want to say a big thank you and shout out to my main sponsors, Artistically Paid, Easy Roller Dice and Any Cubic, who do help support the channel and send me lots of free stuff, which is awesome. So cheers guys. So back to the trees, now they're all done, ready to paint. Um, yeah, so I'm really pleased with how these come out, didn't take too long. Uh, the grout dried really quick and just takes away that, um, that flat bottomed edge. Um, so yeah, so basically I'm just going to go straight over these with some good old contrast paint. Again, this paint is so nice to use, it really is quick, it's easy. Um, yeah, you just chuck it on and it's like it's got an instant wash built in. Uh, obviously there's a bit more of a technical term for what it does. Uh, but as you can see, you just put one sort of coat on and in obviously the, uh, the crevices and uh, nooks and crannies, it adds sort of the depth and shadow and the top it's just a bit lighter. It makes painting 17 trees a doddle. And there we go. So I've done the same sort of thing for the top, bit of green contrast paint. And yeah, I am very happy with these trees. So I've glued them down onto a little metal washer. Again, this is just to add some weight to the bottom. And I've also put magnets in all of these. And in regards to costs, to print them out on the 3D printer is approximately 60p each. But then to make the ones out of the resin um, is 30p. Obviously, you need to take into consideration the fact that I have to make the moulds as well. So the moulds may be another pound or so, give or take. So if you are going to make lots of a certain thing, maybe it is best to 3D print it and then make a mould and make loads of casts of it. So there you go guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave comments down below, hit the thumbs up button, and if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell. Okay guys, that's it. Bye for now.